In this video, I'm going to show you how to start and run an engine fitted with the EDC pump without it being in the car or having any kind of a controller. You might do this if you just bought an engine and you want to check and see if it works good before you do anything to the pump or anything else. So first of all, let me explain how the fuel is routed. Um, your fuel comes on this hose it's going to come from your tank it goes to this fuel heater which is on the cylinder head so it has hot coolant it heats up the fuel comes out into this pre-filter from the pre-filter it comes out through here and this goes into your shutoff valve and then from the shutoff valve it comes to right here which is your lift pump so this is what um, pressurizes all the fuel gets sucked in through here and forced out through here and then it comes in through your um, fuel filter it comes in here it gets cleaned comes back out through here and into your engine and so this is what it looks like normally and i'm going to show you what you can do to um, start it without needing a computer of any kind to control it so now that I've explained what it looks like stock, this is how we're going to modify it to be able to run. What we want to do, first of all, is we want to go straight into here from your tank or your fuel source. If you have a little jug or whatever you're using, you're going to go straight into here. Uh, the best way to do that is to cut off right here and leave this plastic over. You can tell the engine is dirty. I'm trying to make this as real as possible. You're not going to be working on a nice, shiny, clean engine. It's going to look something like this. You just barely pulled from an old car or something. Um, you're going to cut it off right here, and you're going to slide a hose over it, a rubber hose. I believe this is 8 millimeters, about 5 sixteenths. Don't quote me on that. Then this, what it's going to do is it's going to suck in the fuel. It's going to pressurize it, and it's going to come out here. So from here, it goes into the fuel filter, so you're going to leave that. And right here is where it comes out. And out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out to the bottom of the shutoff valve. The bottom is right here, okay? So you're gonna cut off that and you're gonna cut off right here and you're gonna put a rubber hose linking the two, okay? After you do that, what you wanna do is these two points, you need to loop them to where they're connected. There's two ways of you doing that. You can just snip, snip and put a rubber hose linking the two. Or what I am going to attempt to do is disconnect this, which is normally on your pre-filter, and I'm going to loop this into that. That's what I'm hoping to achieve. We'll see. Usually, you know, yeah, here's a perfect example. Usually these break or the O-rings are bad or something, but you can see this uh, broke part of it. I imagine, yep, part of it's in there. It's kind of common. Um, so we'll see if it works. I might just have to put in a new one and then just cut it and loop it, but that's the idea. So, I'll... so this is what I did. Um, like I said, I just used this hose, which originally went over there to from the pre-filter into here, and I just loop these two. And then down here, the one on the bottom of your shutoff valve, um, I left a piece of hose, of the plastic hose that was on there. And this is just the same uh, hose that was on here that goes back to your tank. I just used what I had, uh, looped the out from your fuel filter out and onto here. So this is a little bit uh, thinner. The diameters are, are different. The one that comes from the tank to here is thicker than the return line. I don't know why, but anyways, that's why I use the thinner one is about this diameter. The thicker one, which is this hose, originally slides onto here because it has a plastic over and it's a little bit wider. So a little FYI there, you can use what you already have. And uh, now all I need to do is just put a fuel source, so a little tank of diesel, onto this. And the last thing you need to do, since you don't have a computer to move the rack, by, f uh, I was going to say the fog, that's Spanish, by uh, default, the rack is all the way back like that's your engine is off there's no power to it the racks pulled all the way back so what you do is you take this off there's six uh, t30 
torque screws and this is called the rack plate or rack cover you're going to take that plate off and inside of there we'll see what the rack looks like once you loosen the six t30 screws you either need to remove your lift pump or the shutoff valve because there's no way to get it up or down or to either side to take it off okay um Remove the lift pump if you want to, it's these two 10 millimeters, or you remove the shutoff valve, which has uh, two T30s. This is gonna leak some diesel probably, this is gonna leak some oil probably, so pick your poison. I went with the shutoff valve, so you just remove those, and then this just slides straight back. And I'll just put it here to get it out of the way. Somehow, with one hand. And now, you can get the rack cover off okay it just has this it has a rubber gasket in it and um, you can see what the shutter valve looks like on the back it's just this little inlet and it has a o-ring on it okay i'm just going to clean it and put it right back on okay now that our rack cover is off what you want to do is find something that you can jam in there this is just a socket um, the rack always wants to be pulled back and that's because there's no power on here so it's being pulled back it's a magnet um, right here you can see that's pretty close to full throttle if I had to guess I'd say this is about 5,000 rpm you definitely don't want to start an engine right at 5,000 rpm but you do want that to be able to bleed the system so I'd like to get it as far forward as you can I'm going to connect my fuel from here and then this is the return line. I'm gonna connect that. And then I'm gonna crank it without glow plugs, without starter fluid. And you're just gonna crank it for a while until you get fuel in the whole system. Um, I also like to use a little uh, low pressure lift pump. Not everyone has one of those. You don't really need one. I mean, it saves it from cranking for so long, but this works too. And then when I'm ready for it to go, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my socket out and I'm gonna turn it sideways and to where it's not putting it all the way forward it's just a couple millimeters forward and then i'm going to spray starter fluid in the inlet or if you have your manifold on you'd spray it right here just a quick shh. i don't have the manifold on so i'm just going to go shh, shh, you know a quick spray across all the intake ports and then you're going to start it i'll show you what that looks like so here we have it everything is hooked up um, battery you just have your positive on here on the battery the negative like i said i just do it on the engine mount here is the in so you can see this is your lift pump and you want the one furthest away that's the in and i just have that going down to what i told you was just a little uh low pressure lift pump and this is like 15 dollars or something and then the return is this second one closer to the engine and i just have that going down into a little jug of diesel so you can see what it looks like um, now we're gonna crank it's not gonna start and I don't expect it to um, before we do that though we are what I like to do is turn on the lift pump here and sorry what this is gonna do is just speed it all up and so once and I'm waiting till I get fuel from here which is your return which I'm getting a little bit of fuel. So it should be ready. Now I'm gonna crank it until I start seeing dark smoke. So it goes. There we go. You can see it's puffing out smoke. Okay, that means it's ready to start. We don't wanna start it with this in there because it's gonna rev really, really high. All right, so I'm gonna take that out and turn it sideways. Uh, I have a can of starter fluid, and you're just gonna do a quick spray. It's hard to video and do it at the same time, but, oops. Okay, it's easier when you have the manifold on because you just spray it right in the manifold, but I have two hands now, so I'm gonna hold the rack a little bit more for forward than what it was. I'll try to start it here. Thank you. 
Thank you.